This lesson deals with coupled inductors. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 15, starting on page 1. Magnetic flux phi surrounds a wire carrying an electric current. When the wire is wound into a coil, the lines of flux concentrate along the axis of the coil, as shown here by these lines. Experimentally, in a linear medium, the flux is proportional to both the current and the number of turns in the coil. So we can write an expression for phi as the number of turns times the current and then a proportionality factor to make the units and the numbers line up. This is at the bottom of the page. The magnetic flux intercepts, or we say links, the turns of the coil. Here's the turns of the coil, and here's that flux intercepting it. We call this a flux linkage. It's proportional to the number of turns in the coil and the total magnetic flux. So again, we could write an expression that the flux linkage is equal to the number of turns times magnetic flux. And this has been found experimentally. Now I'll go back and substitute in the expression we had for our magnetic flux, and we can get an expression for our flux linkage. And this is shown on the next page. So our magnetic flux is some K1 times N times I of T. This would be the current in the inductor. I can pull these terms together here, and I've got N squared times K1 times I sub L of T. And back in chapter 6 on page 12 in ECE 201, we call this term inductance. Now by Faraday's law, if we take the derivative of the flux linkage, we get the voltage across the coil. If we take the derivative of this with respect to time, the inductance is constant, so you can pull that out in front. We just have the derivative of the current in the inductance with respect to T. Now suppose that a second coil is brought close to the first coil. So the flux from the first coil links or intercepts with the turns of the second coil. If the current in the first coil is changing, then this flux linkage will generate a voltage in the second coil. This coupling between a changing current in one coil and the voltage across the second coil is called mutual inductance. Let's express this as a series of equations. So here I've got my first coil, call it V1 across it and a current I1 going into it, and then a second coil, the voltage V2 across it and a current I2. Let's assume that these two coils are very far apart. So we have magnetic flux in the first coil proportional to the current flowing in it, and also the number of turns. Flux linkage in coil one due to the current in coil one is equal to the number of turns times the flux. Do the same thing for our second coil. So its magnetic flux is equal to the current times the number of turns in that coil times the proportionality factor. The flux linkage of coil two due to the current in coil two is equal to the number of turns in coil two times its magnetic flux. So the voltage across coil one due to the current flowing in coil one would be the derivative of our flux linkage with respect to time. But that's equal to this term. And we can bring out the N, because here's our function of time. And of course, the magnetic flux is equal to this, and we can pull out the K1 and the N1. And we're left with the current, which is also a function of time, and the derivative of that with respect to T. So this again, this is the voltage across coil one due to the current flowing in coil one. Do the same thing for coil two. Take the derivative of its flux linkage with respect to time. I've shown over here that that was N2 times the magnetic flux of coil 2. Bring out the N2, it's not a function of time, so we're taking the derivative of phi 2 with respect to T. And then, of course, that's equal to this expression up here. So you can pull out the K2 and the N2 again. So we get K2 times N2 squared, and then we're left with I2 of T. And then, of course, that's changing with time, so we take the derivative with respect to T. So again, this is the voltage across coil 2 due to the current flowing in coil 2. Now, the assumption here was that the coils were very far apart. And what that's implying is that there's no mutual inductance, there's no cross-coupling. But now if we bring the coils closer together, we'll have that the flux produced by each coil intercepts the other coil. And now we'll have an inner relationship. Most, but not all, of the fluxes of coil 1 and coil 2 will intercept each other. So we have a relationship between the magnetic flux of coil 1 due to the current flowing in coil 2. So again, that'd be proportional to the number of turns in coil 2 and the current, and then some scale factor, say K12. And the flux linkage would then just be the number of turns in coil one times this, do the same thing on the other side, is that we've got current flowing in coil one, number of turns in coil one, inducing magnetic flux in coil two, and then the flux linkage would just be N2 times that. So now if we take the derivative of the flux linkage from coil one to coil two, again, due to a current in coil two, with respect to T, then get the voltage across coil 1 due to the current flowing in coil 2. Again, this is equal to N1 times phi 12 
but this is not a function of time, so let's bring that out, and we've got the derivative of phi12 with respect to t. But phi12 was equal to k12 times n2 times i2 of t, bring out those two constants, and then we have the derivative of i2 with respect to t. Same thing for coil 2, take the derivative of the flux linkage of coil 2, do the current flowing in coil 1 with respect to t, we get the voltage, and of course that's related to the number of turns, so you can pull that out in front, and then times the derivative of the magnetic flux from coil 2 to coil 1. And that's equal to this term, so you can pull out the k21 and the n1, multiply it times n2, and take the derivative then of the last term, which is i1 of t dt. So what we've got here is a cross-coupling between the coils due to the mutual coupling between the two. Experimentally, when the magnetic medium supporting these fluxes is linear, we can apply superposition and find the total voltage across the coils as the sum of the above with the previous page. So the voltage across coil 1 would be V11 plus V12. So here's our expression for V11 and our expression for V12. And then likewise for V2 of t, it would be V21 of t plus V22 of t. This is our expression for V21 and for V22. Now we had previously defined that K1 times N1 squared was equal to L1. That's the inductance of our first coil. And that this term here, K2 times N2 squared, was our inductance of coil 2. We could then define a term for this and for this in terms of a new inductance we'll call M, or mutual inductance. So I'll call this one M12. It's the mutual inductance from coil 1 to coil 2 due to a current in coil 2. And this one we'll call M21. And that's the mutual inductance from coil 2 to 1 due to a current flowing in coil 1. Sometimes called L1 and L2 self-inductance. And then we'll call M12 and 21 mutual inductance. Experimentally, it's been found in a magnetic medium that K12 equals K21. We'll just call that in a case of M then. Then that would imply that M12 is equal to M21 from our equation above. And then we can just put that in as K sub M times N1, N2. And we'll define that then as our mutual inductance. So we can revise our previous set of equations now and put just M here and M here. And these are some of the properties of coupled inductors. 